Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the magnetic field of our planet. Because of all the things that make our planet exceptionally majestic and very unusual, and also of all the things that allow our planet to support life, the magnetic field is probably one of the most crucial ones. And today we'll talk about a new discovery. Let's talk about this and welcome to Odemath. So when it comes to the terrestrial planets of our solar system, it's really two that actually possess any kind of magnetic field. This one here, Mercury, has a very weak but still functional magnetic field, and of course our planet Earth that still has a relatively powerful field around it. Mars unfortunately no longer possesses anything, and today we believe that it's one of the reasons why it lost its atmosphere and is no longer able to support liquid water, even though at some point in the past it probably had a very large ocean. Venus on the other hand is even more unusual in that it doesn't really produce the magnetic field the usual way, but it does possess something known as the induced magnetic field that's created by the highly energetic particles that strike upper atmosphere and then generate a type of a weak magnetic field around the planet, although it's not even remotely comparable to what our planet has. In other words, when it comes to magnetic fields, our planet definitely wins, and we think it's why it still has liquid water and why it's able to support life. And even though some of the more recent studies discovered that our magnetic field is actually a lot older than we originally believed, possibly as old as the planet itself, about 4.2 billion years old, we are still not entirely clear at, first of all, how it's generated, even though there are a lot of different ideas and theories, and second of all, how it changed throughout the history of our planet. And that's, of course, until some of the recent studies, including the recent major study that you can find in the description below. So, today we believe that the reason we have the magnetic field is because of the so-called liquid outer core that's churning and moving around in the fashion that you see right here. This is actually one of the more recent simulations created by the scientists. And we believe this motion is caused by the central inner solid core that's so hot and so dramatically different in temperature that it forces the outer core to circulate in this fashion. And because the material here is metallic, the circulation then creates the magnetic uh, lines that we're observing. In other words, even though the idea is sort of simple in principle, when you really look at what's happening here and try to simulate all of this on a supercomputer, the actual reality is quite dramatically more complex than we ever thought. So this is kind of one of the recent simulations and it shows you how extremely complex all of this is. But the thing is, this is only the more recent development in the history of our planet because we believe that all of this started about 540 million years ago. Now, this date is actually a little bit more significant than some people think. 540 million years ago is also the beginning of the so-called Cambrian explosion that saw the development of some of the more diverse and some of the more complex life ever. Basically, this was when a lot of various multicellular animals started to be created and they spread all over the world and allowed the evolution to really kickstart. Basically, this is when life as we know it kind of began. Before that, it was a lot more simple and usually either unicellular or if it was multicellular, it was a lot more primitive. But whether it's connected to the creation of the magnetic field, we don't really know. And also, until very recently, we didn't even know if there was a strong magnetic field before this. As a matter of fact, scientists didn't actually think it was that strong to begin with, and this kind of conflicted with the idea of magnetic field protecting our planet. And so the recent study that just came out discovered that, well, apparently, the magnetic field in the past was even stronger than today. And this illustration here with the dates on the bottom, this is in millions of years, so basically, this here is about 4.2 billion years ago, this here is about 3 billion years ago, shows you how it compares to the more recent values. You Notice how about 3.2 billion years ago the magnetic field was basically close to double the strength. But if the weird strange churning mechanism was not actually working yet, how is that even possible? And also how do we even know there was magnetic field to begin with? Well, for this particular study, the scientists used really, really tiny rocks, very ancient rocks from Australia known as zircon. These rocks are actually used in a lot of different applications, but for this particular study, they wanted to find some of the oldest rocks on the planet 
And it just so happens that Australia is really rich in these different deposits. As a matter of fact, there are several areas that you can see right here that have some of the most ancient rocks and zircon rocks that we've ever seen anywhere on the planet. A few years ago, this, for example, made the headlines because this was the oldest rock discovered at 4.4 billion years old, and this was from Australia as well. But why these rocks? Well, inside of these rocks, they actually do contain metallic materials, and more specifically, some of these minerals contain metallic materials on the inside that actually becomes trapped in time as the zircon solidifies. In other words, if there is any kind of metal in there and it's sort of exposed to the magnetic field, as these materials are formed, the metal will actually form in a certain direction. But to help you understand this a little bit better, one of the best examples I can give you is actually from the ocean floor. Today, if you look at the ocean floor, in certain parts of the world you'll discover where the tectonic plates are actually sort of moving apart from one another. And it just so happens that if you were to analyze the actual formations of rock as it slowly moves away from each other, you'll discover that once in a while there's these magnetic stripes. Basically, some of the material in the rock is deposited this way, north to south, and sometimes it's deposited the opposite way, south to north. And this is actually exactly how the scientists discovered that, well, apparently, the magnetic field of our planet actually flips once in a while. And by using these strips, because they actually move away with a certain period of time, we can then calculate how long it takes for the magnetic field of our planet to flip from north to south. And so using a very similar analysis, the scientists were able to use these rocks to essentially discover that the magnetic field of our planet was much stronger in the past. And this required them to actually do a little bit of analysis because they needed to figure out how was it actually formed. What created this magnetic field if the so-called geodynamo, basically when all of this stuff is churning inside our planet and generating the magnetic field, was not actually active yet. Something else must have been creating the magnetic field and that's something they believe was magnesium oxide. And the actual story goes as follows. So approximately 4.4, maybe 4.5 billion years ago, there was a very large collision between planet Earth and a Mars-like object known as Theia. This, we believe, created the Moon and possibly created a lot of other conditions on our planet that allowed our planet to evolve into what it is today. But at the same time, this also created a very unusual deposits on the surface of various materials, including the uh, relatively magnetic material known as magnesium oxide. Although I think this is a more unusual picture of the magnesium oxide. This is the 3D uh, dice that the scientists created a few years ago. A much more common picture makes it look more like a powder that you would find inside a typical bottle. And so because of this collision, the scientists think that a lot of magnesium oxide ended up in the inner parts of our planet. But with time, the magnesium oxide within our planet started to precipitate out and move slower and slower toward the surface. But because it's magnetic, the actual motion of magnesium oxide from inside to the outside of the planet continuously generated a very powerful magnetic field around the planet for a few billion years. But eventually the planet ran out of magnesium oxide on the inside, and so it's quite possible that the entire magnetic field actually disappeared for at least some time. Although we don't really have any evidence of this just yet. But luckily for our planet, approximately 540 to maybe 565 million years ago, another mechanism started the magnetic field creating the dynamo that we have today. And this is something that will last for at least a billion years from now. Now we're not entirely sure what started this, and we're also not entirely sure how long our planet was barren and basically was without the magnetic field or if this period even existed, but we think that it was actually because the inner core of our planet formed. Before that there was really nothing, it was more of a liquid core. And as soon as the inner core became differentiated from the outer core, there was a kind of a temperature barrier that then started generating all of these cycles that you see right here. Before that, we don't think it existed. Now, once again, the mystery here is that, is this related to the sudden explosion of life? There is a correlation, but we don't really know if they're connected in a direct way. It's very possible that because this was now available and before that there was almost no magnetosphere, life could now actually become more active and even uh, live on land as opposed to just in the water. But once again, a lot more research is needed to see if this is connected. And the other mystery we have is in regards to other planets. Did they also have a very similar magnesium-based magnetic field or did it work in some other way in the past? 
For example, how exactly did this work on Mars? Now this is something we can only solve by going to Mars and studying the rocks in more detail, but until then it's going to remain mystery. But nevertheless, discovering how the magnetic field works and how it survives on some planets but not others is exceptionally important in our search for the next planet we could potentially settle or a planet where we could find life. Today we are absolutely certain that the magnetic field is one of the major reasons why our planet, okay maybe not this destroyed planet, but the planet that we all know and love was able to maintain life for so long and how it allowed life to evolve here. Magnetic field is literally a shield that protects us from a lot of things out there in space. Without it, we're not going to survive for very long. So finding objects with magnetic field and understanding how it works is really, really important. But until we learn more about the magnetosphere, that's pretty much it. Check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Until then, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And it looks like these two planets are about to collide. Oopsie.